Recently, John Kelly, a good friend of mine who's the pastor of Chicago West Bible Church, came and preached a message in our series on justice. I encourage you to go and listen to that message in case you missed it. But after that sermon, we sat down and had a conversation, just two pastors talking about how to lead our churches in this current cultural moment. We talked about the political climate, about racial tensions, about people growing closer to Christ. And rather than make you listen to an hour-long conversation between two pastors, we've broken that up into segments. And so what you're about to see is the next segment in a conversation between two pastors. I've heard... um different podcasts and blogs, people saying that this issue of justice, defining it, understanding it, is the issue facing the church today. Um, And I remember something you said when you preached, you'd said that if we don't look any different from the world in our approach to justice, if it's winners and losers, um, and if it's vengeance, and if it's guilt-driven, then why would anybody care what we have to say if it's no different from what the world offers? Do you think that's true, that justice is the, the the primary issue facing the church today? I don't. Well, what is? I would totally disagree with that. I think the the two biggest issues is we don't love each other. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. He said the entire Bible hangs on those two things. And then he says, and it's the high priestly prayer, he talks about this right by uh, I believe it's the high priestly player, maybe some place, but by this, all men will know that you're my disciples, yeah. by your love for one another. This is how people will know that you follow me. And a disciple is someone who follows someone. So that means if this is the way I am, they will know you're like that. Yeah. By your love for one another. So then if you ask me what's the biggest problem with the church, I would say we hate each other. And I know that's a strong word, but according to the dictionary, hate is to strongly despise something. I like, I hate coffee. What? I know. That is like blasphemy in the Kelly home. I don't think I knew that about you. Dude, don't buy me coffee. <laughs> I feel so bad. People are like, here's a Starbucks gift card. And I'm like, just I pass don't them eat to the me. sandwiches. When you get those, just <laughs> give them the pass them. No, but, but the point is we all have things. That's what hate means. It means to strongly despise something. I, I know we're talking and about so, justice, but I can't get past the fact that you strongly despise coffee. I do, yeah. Coffee and I do, uh, yogurt, too. Well, that's okay. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. We're, we're, I'm with you there. I know. But here, here's the point, though, is that um, it would be hard for us to look at certain situations and certain people and not say with integrity, the truth would be we would be like, I strongly despise that person. Mm. I strongly de- despise that president. I, sp- I strongly de- uh, despise that party. Mm-hmm. I strongly despise those people. And a lot of them are Christian. And so you have to then say, if you strongly despise those people, you hate them. And, and so I would say all these issues we see in the news, all the yeah. tensions, all the things that happen over and over and over and over, is God is showing the church, you're my children and you hate one another. Mm-hmm. I mean, you started with the great commandment that love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And those, those are not two different commands. They flow out of one. And I, totally. I remember uh, reading A.W. Tozer's great classic little book, Knowledge of the Holy. He says the, 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 the question facing the people of God in any generation is not, it's not politics and it's not policies. It's the question of God. Because their concept of God will inform how they love, how they serve, and how they interact in the world. And then so I, I hadn't really thought about that, but if, if it's true that we strongly despise one another and we're hating each other and dividing, what does that say about our concept of God? Please, sh- please preach to me. No, let me just show you something real quick from, from our brother. Think about this, and I'm reading from the ESV. This is Paul, 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, sacrificial service. If I give away all that I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burnt, a martyr, but have not love, I gain nothing. Mm. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. 
It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And I would add in there, right, if I voted for this person, if I did this and I did that, but I had not love. If I gave my clothes to the poor, mm. I sold my house and gave it away to the poor, but had not love, I have nothing. So I would argue that the biggest problem is we don't truly know what love is. Mm. You know, I read that to my wife when I asked her to marry me, and I don't think I had a clue what I was reading at that time. <laughs> You and me both, we preached a series on that, that chapter not long ago, and I, I still, even hearing you read it, it's like, that is it. So what, okay, let me ask you then, what, what does love look like on the west side of Chicago for you in your pastoral context? Yeah, it looks, love is always shape, uh, shifting. Mm -hmm. um, love doesn't compromise truth. So we're guided by the word of God, yeah. right? So in all that we do, but um, we put it like this. Jesus put it so best when he said, love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is I would want for you what I will want for myself. Um, yeah. I don't want my kids going to a school that's ranked two out of 10. I wouldn't send my kids there. Why would I want that for you? Mm. Um, if I came home from prison, I would want to try and get a job, which I have, um, get plugged into community in a healthy church. I wouldn't want the sins of my past always being hung over my head. Mm. So that's how we're going to approach that. Um, what does it mean? To, what does it look like to love our neighbors? What does it mean to look like? To, what does it look like to enter an environment where there's division? Well, we want to be mediators. That's what love would do. So we work closely with the police department, but we work with people in the community. We want to be bridge builders. We want to be peacemakers. Yeah. Blessed are the peacemakers, right. for they shall be called sons and daughters of God, right? Yeah. Blessed, blessed are the merciful, so they shall obtain, obtain mercy. And so for us, is, it's, it's, to me, it's not that complex. It's just doing for somebody else what I would want. But also, I don't compromise truth, because in my heart, I want to know and love Christ more than anything. That's, that's the thing I'll pray for my kids and I want for my kids. So I want that for my neighbor. But also, whatever tangible things I would want to be experiencing, I would want for them. If there's an injustice somewhere um, that they're experiencing, I, would, I know what that's like, and I would want that. If there's a food desert and people can't get access to fresh produce and stuff, I know I would want to eat fresh produce and stuff. I want that. And so doing, you know, loving your neighbor really just means wanting for somebody else mm -hmm. what you would want for yourself and doing whatever you can to make it happen. Yeah, that's right. Doing whatever you can. In your context. In your in context. The opportunity you have. Yeah. Everybody has needs. And what I, what I find is, um, you know, the city and the suburbs and, you know, uh, black and white, all these different things, Hispanic, at the root, there's a lot of the same issues. Mm -hmm. It just looks different. As you and I have talked, I think that's one of the things that becomes more and more clear is the same pastoral heart for the same people dealing with the same issues. It looks a little different. You go to you go to you know you go to some neighborhoods on the west side and the south side and you're like man, there's all these fatherless homes, mm -hmm. and then you go into the suburbs and you got teenagers who feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my dad was in the house, but he might as well not been there. They feel fatherless the same way, mm -hmm. and so you know there's alcohol addiction in different places, same way. Mm -hmm. It just looks a little different in some areas, but the question we have to come back to is. What does it look like for me to love my neighbor and want for them what I would want for myself in this yeah. situation? So yeah. is that how you flesh it out? Is that how you think about, like, what does it, like, what does it look like for you to love your neighbor when you're out here, you know, at Chapel Street and yeah. in your context? Well, fundamentally, yeah, the same thing. Um, wanting, like you said, and, and wanting the best. For, love, to love is desire the best for somebody. And we talk about it often in our church that, we desire the best for our community, not just, I mean, I desire the best for the people that live near me in my neighborhood and my community, but also as a church, God's placed us here. He's placed you and the West Side and us here in this region to be a blessing to the community, yeah. whether they come here or not, that they would, to love them is to make, is to, is to help the community flourish as we can, individually, as a family, as a church family. Um, so yeah, I think that uh, it can't just be about, well, I, I say it all the time, but we are a church not just for ourselves, but for our neighbors. And you, you and I both talked about who's my neighbor, right? It's, yeah. it's 
it's not just the people next door. Uh, it's a witness as well. Yeah. Right? Because, um, you know, you could preach all you want, but people need to know that you care. Mm-hmm. Right? And it's, it's, it's when you grab lunch with your coworker who's battling depression and you could easily do something else. You invite mm-hmm. that couple over for dinner that's struggling. Yeah. Right? You walk with that young man or that young woman who's going through challenges. It's that, that young woman um, or the young man, who, that couple who's thinking about having an abortion. Yeah. And, and you begin to walk with them, right? And you don't just quote a verse, but you have them over your home or you're yeah. trying to come alongside of and be supportive of them and you're weeping with them and you're feeling that. Yeah. That's loving your neighbor. Right. You've, you know? talked, you've taught me, John, about, I hear, every time I hear you talk about the table, how important the table is. I remember, in fact, after that, uh, you might not remember this, but after that panel we were on together and we were standing around talking afterwards and guys were making big plans, we're going to do a conference like this, <laughs> and, and you said, man, let's just break bread together. Let's just sit and let's, just, let's start there. Let's just yeah, have a meal yeah. together. And that's been important for me to think about. That's how our friendship really, yeah. you know, developed was just breaking food. bread and eating food. food. No yeah. coffee, but food. No, no coffee, that's but right. food, that's yeah. Good.